In an era of the coronavirus, this is the Kovrig family bubble. There's Vina, Michael Kovrig's wife, his sister Ariana, his father Bennett. Unseen, unheard for Kovrig's entire detention until now. I would like to see my son again. The strain of it, the silence, the time apart, it's all raw. Sir? Bennett Kovrig's fragile health is the reason the family got one brief phone call back in March. Held back from talking to or about Michael for a crushing amount of time has a cost. To put it bluntly, we kept our mouths shut in the public for a year and a half. So I think that, you know, we have reached the end of the road in playing, you know, the, the uh, be quiet and uh, everything will be all right game. Scheme the attention so from the government, they um, say, has been kind and personal, but the words seem to have no weight. It gets to a point where rhetoric can only get us so far and... I'm scared I'm never going to see my brother again, and I don't know why those in power are so scared of doing the right thing. And the right thing, in their view, is to look again at legal options. Is there anything the government can do now to stop the extradition process of Meng Wanzhou, which could be the key to freedom for Michael Spaver and Michael Kovrig? It is an unreviewable discretion. The family asked lawyer Brian Greenspan to examine the Extradition Act. He says a 1999 change in the act means the justice minister can legally step in and still preserve judicial independence. The minister has the right to withdraw the authority to proceed and to end the extradition proceeding, and it's totally at the discretion of the Minister of Justice. The Canadian government, though, continues to say it won't get involved. We in Canada are used to and proud of the independence and the integrity and the respect for our judicial system, and will continue to do that. Has the government misinterpreted the law until this well, point? I, I think that they've ignored the appropriate interpretation. Let's stop saying we can't when according to the law, according to the Extradition Act, according to legal opinions offered by very bright legal experts, we can. Vina Najibullah sought the legal opinion, presented it to the government weeks ago, and didn't get a reply. But the Office of the Justice Minister and Attorney General released a statement to CBC News today in part saying, we're well aware of the laws and processes, and it would not be appropriate to comment further. I think it should have been stopped earlier. And I Former Supreme Court Justice Louise Arbour says she believes not only could Canada stop Mung's extradition, it should, and should have done so a long time ago. Is it in Canada's national interest, including the protection of the security and life of two Canadians? I would say this has to stop. But I can see there are people who would make the argument that this would sound an awful lot like negotiating with hostage takers and there might be targets on the backs of other Canadians in China. That's true. That's one of the arguments. Unfortunately, we never really reached that level of conversation or thinking because we were told by the government from the outset we don't even go there. The matter is before the courts, um, you know, deference to judicial independence in this country. We can't do anything. This is not correct. We can. For the sake of the two Michaels, just have the conversation is the plea. And maybe angering the Americans is not a risk Canada is willing to take. But the family asks, just talk it out. Do the right thing. This is about people's lives, not politics. There are things that can be done that don't take people away from their family and their lives. And China lashed out at the United States and Canada again today for calling the detention of the two Michaels politically motivated while defending the arrest of Meng Wanzhou as a rule of law issue. This, this is double standards. It really makes us wonder how low they can uh, go. China also dismisses yesterday's statement from Washington that accused Beijing of arbitrarily detaining the two Michaels and went on to join Canada's call for their immediate release. As for Meng, her next extradition hearing is set for August 17th at BC Supreme Court. Legal proceedings are expected to run well into next year.